Hey guys, it's Mei Mei, and today it is time to continue in our masculine projects. And for Father's Day, I wanted to do something that you could do last minute for your dad. So check this out. This is one of those boxes that closes like this. It has a rubber band inside and it pops open. And I'll show you this. This was sent to me by a subscriber. And unfortunately, I have lost the name. It is totally my fault. Um, I'm so sorry if you sent this to me. Thank you so much. I did talk about it in my Crafter After Show, but there, I don't have the name on here, and I was supposed to write it on, and I didn't, and I'm sorry. But I want to show you what it does. So in this little box, you open it, and they pop out like that. You've probably seen these before. I did a little research, and these guys have been around for several years, so there's lots of videos out there. And because of that, today, I'm going to be using my friend Edith's tutorial, which I'm going to link in the description below. Now, I am going to do something slightly different, but only because it's just the way I craft. Not that anything Edith did was not correct. Hers is correct. I just craft a little different. So, I'm going to show you my way just a little bit. Okay. So, you're going to need to start with two pieces of cardstock. This piece is eight and a quarter by seven and a half. Um, and we're going to score it in several places. On the eight and a quarter inch side, we're going to score at two and three fourths and at five and a half. Now, I want to thank Edith for doing these measurements. She saved me on this one, made it super easy. Um, when you turn it on the seven and a half side, we're going to score at two and three fourths, three and one half, four and one fourth, and then at seven. Now, I'm going to link Edith's um, video, not just her video, her blog post below and her video for you guys. So you can get all the measurements from hers because we're literally using her project today. So I'm grateful. All right. So there's one sheet and I want to show you this. I went ahead and drew it on the second sheet so you could see it. It's the same thing, but I wanted you to see the score marks in case you couldn't see them on camera. Now we're going to be cutting these three panels away. So let's go ahead and do that real quick so you can see how that works. So I'm going to be cutting away this section here that we scored, the thing is this, once I get it cut and laid down, you'll be able to see which pieces I cut away easier than me trying to describe them. So I'm going to cut this piece real quick. Okay, so these are three panels we don't need, and what we do need is that one flap left and cut to it, okay? So I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to cut this little guy off. Now I'm going to tell you, I think after making several of these boxes, you need to try to be kind of precision on this as far as your cuts and your folds are concerned. So I'm going to show you some places I've made some little edits to make it a little easier for me. All right, so once you've cut these two flaps off, we need to do some kind of like fussy cutting, okay? So I'm going to take a different pair of scissors, and here I'm going to slice there just to separate that little piece up to where it crosses, Okay, and I'm going to do the same on the other side, but I'm going to flip this over because I can get to it better from the back side, and I'm going to make the same slice just up to where that cross is over. See that? So you're making like a little tab here. Then we're going to come in and we're going to cut some little angle cuts. Now, these angle cuts get edited later, but for now, I'm just doing them to get them out of the way. You could actually probably wait to do these little cuts. You'll see what I'm talking about. It's one of those things that I discovered I needed to do to make my box a little squarer. And it may just be because I have kind of a, a sloppy hand when I fold things. Now, at the bottom, this is a flat we wanted to keep. But we need to angle cut this just to take some bulk out whenever we put this guy together. So there's that. And then we have some more cutting to do, but we'll do that in a second. All right, I'm going to do this one exactly the same way, and we'll get to the next step. Now, the next step involves your trimmer. We need to cut these corners into an angle, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my piece into my trimmer, and where my score lines meet, where I have an angle cut across them, I'm going to slice that. So, just watch this. I'll pull this away, and you'll see what I mean. See that little angle? That's what we're looking for. We want that on both sides. So, just in that corner, you're going to line your score marks up, and then slice that angle across. Now you can do that with a ruler and a blade or draw it with a pencil and cut it later. That's just the way I'm gonna do it because I'm better with my trimmer than handheld scissors. <laughs> Let me do it here where it's just a score mark. So you can see I'm still lining up my score marks and I'm just gonna slice through. And on this, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna line up my score marks and slice through. All right, so there's that and we are ready to start assembly. Now, before I do any assembly, I want to fold. Let's fold the one that's marked so you can see all the pieces. So, I want to fold and I want to crease. And the reason I want to do this now is because I want to make sure I'm doing very precision folds. 
So take your time on this part and line things up. You will be happy you did later. I found that just kind of willy-nilly folding didn't work for me. I really have to pay attention and get everything pretty straight um, to get it to kind of pop right and everything glue together right. You can see I've made a bunch. I have glue all over my fingers. <laughs> all right, so I'm just going to crease all of these folds. Okay, so while we're here, this middle section that does like this when you've got your fold, do you see that? That's what's actually going to hold your rubber band so the box can um, pop. Here's what we need to do. We need to do an angle cut here. So I'm going to fold this in half, and on the middle line that we scored, I'm going to make an angled cut, and a pretty deep one, and I'll tell you why. See how far in I went right there? I want to do kind of that same depth on this side. You don't have to measure you just really want to bring this into the middle. And this is where my mechanism changes a little bit. In all the other videos I saw, they poked a hole here and they tied the rubber band. But I don't want to tie a rubber band. I don't like the way that feels. It's just a thing with me. So I'm going to show you a different way to do it. But if you want to see with poking the hole and tying the rubber band, be sure to watch Edith's tutorial because she does a good job showing you that. Okay, so a little more prep we need to do here. What I want to do is I want to fold this little flap forward, okay? And while I've got it forward, I want to trim this angle to match that. I found I got a better box when I trimmed that off to match. It just got that out of my way. And we'll, I'll show you some other little places where that works for me. Now what I want to do is I want to bring this corner to this corner. Just going to push that out a little bit. I'm going to line up those two corners and press down, and that's going to create my little side score just like that. So I don't have to do it with a scoreboard or a scoring tool. I'm just going to do it that way. And then another place I need to trim is this little guy. I want to match him to that angle underneath. Do you see that? I promise you later it will make things go together so much better if you just go ahead and get that cut just like that. Let's do the other side. So I've got this guy turned up. I'm going to trim it to match, and it's best for me to turn it over where I can see underneath. So I'm going to trim that to match, and then laying this down, oops, wrong way, laying it down, I'm going to bring this point to this point, and I'm just going to let the score kind of create itself, but here's what you've got to make sure of, y'all, this is so serious. Make sure you have a nice, clean, lined-up edge there, okay? Then you want to trim this to match that angle. It might seem like overkill, and I would, I'm would i not usually this um, like precise in a project, but those trims make this go together so much easier, or at least for me. All right, I'm going to do the other one real quick. Same thing. I'm going to do all the folds and the trims, and we'll get right back together. So I got a little ahead of myself, and I glued this, and I've, I need to do it again. So let's do this together. So once you've got everything cut like this, you're going to lay your pieces out, and you're going to adhere these two together. So you want to put some glue on the back of the flap, not the top like I did originally. That's where I messed up. And then you want to glue these pieces together. And this is what's going to make your one solid piece. So you got your little wings here, okay? And you got this guy glued together and he's one piece now. Okay, so this is where I'm doing something a little bit different. Let me show you. So most of the tutorials I saw, they cut their rubber band and they tied it through a hole here and tied it through a hole here. But again, I don't like the feel of tying a rubber band in my hand, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do it like this. This rubber band, just to let you know how big my rubber band is, if I stretch him out and measure him, he is two and a half inches long, okay? And I'm just gonna get him kind of going for a second. And I'm gonna come to this top section and I'm gonna put my rubber band over that top section. And I want it to rest right in that little nook we cut, okay? So I want it to be just like that. Does that make sense? All right, then what I wanna do is I wanna take this other section and I wanna put him in here, okay? So I'm just gonna open my rubber band again and I want to reach over and stick this guy through until it gets to that section. And then I'm going to open it out flat. So you see how these little pieces are holding the rubber band for me? But I don't have to tie anything because I don't really like to do that. Now I want to show you another trick. This guy wants to pop up on you, okay? But you can just place something heavy on him and hold him down. So I'm just going to place my scissors there to keep that in place while I work on this side. Now we can glue. So I'm going to hold these here. I'm going to add a little glue like so, here and here, and then I'm just going to fold this over and adhere it down. So fold this whole section over, just like so, and if you did your folding and everything really well in precision, 
It'll be a nice flip over there. And we'll let that dry. Now what I'm gonna do is on this side, I'm gonna flip this guy over, but I'm gonna put my glue here. Oops, and then here. And then I'm just gonna flip this guy over. See how getting some of that bulk out of there really helps this to work better? That's why I needed to do that. It just wasn't working for me until I did that step. So cutting all those extra little angles made this work a lot better for me. All right, I'm gonna let this dry really well. And then what I wanna do is kind of open this up and I wanna tuck this in, but I'm gonna lay it like that. See how it kind of does it on its own? I'm gonna add my glue like this. Then I'm gonna slide it inside. And then you can lay it down and flatten it. And that will help to seal that shut. Now when I let go of it, it should pop into a box. See, good deal. That's how you make the box. Okay, and I don't have to tie that rubber band, but part of the reason I don't have to is because I got rid of some of those angles and stuff. So you just kind of have to trust that process. I'm not big on tying it, but if you don't have a rubber band this size and you have larger rubber bands, like maybe you have some of these, like just, you know, office style rubber bands, you can totally do what Edith did and pull it and cut it and it works exactly the same. Just watch her video if you don't have a smaller little two and a half inch rubber band. Okay, let me show you the ones I made earlier. So here we go. I made three earlier, and these are the ones I'm going to put into a box. So I took my stamp set called Best Dad, and I just decorated all these little panels and added on the side. And these panels are just two and a half inch panels stamped and placed around. Okay, so now let's make the box they go in. So for the box that's going to hold your little cubes, you're going to need a piece of cardstock that is seven and seven eighths by five and one eighth. And you need to score it at one inch all the way around. So I'm gonna score it at an inch here and then turn it. Do an inch here and turn it. An inch here and then here. And this will become our box bottom. And we'll assemble that in just a second. Now for the sleeve that wraps around the box, you're gonna need a piece that's nine and one eighth by five and seven eighths. And here's where you're gonna score it. You're gonna score it at one and one eighth four and three eighths, five and one half, eight and three fourths. Cool beans, that is what we need for the sleeve. Can you see those lines? All right, let's assemble the bottom. So here, what we wanna do is just like we're assembling a box, I'm going to slice right here to the score lines where they cross, and I'm also gonna take some of that bulk out, just like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna slice up to where they cross. I'm gonna take some of the bulk. I'm not too worried about the piece at the top. I'm not gonna do an angle on both sides. I'll show you why in just a second. I think I get a pretty good lineup without doing that. So I'm gonna do this and make my angle cut. And then I'm gonna do that and make my angle cut. I probably should mention that I am cutting the score line away, but I'm cutting it away on the longer flap so I get a cleaner box. All right, let's fold and crease. Okay, so now all we need to do is glue our little flaps and make this a box. So you'll see here why I did not cut the angle at the top. This way I can get a nice straight line where they match up, you see that? And I don't have that little angle piece cut. So there's that side. Let's keep going all the way around. Now, I should have done this before I folded it up. So you do that when you make yours, but I'll show you something. I'm gonna take my one inch circle punch and I'm just gonna line it up kind of in this area and just make myself a half little cut so I have a place to put my thumb to pull the box out. No big deal if you do it like I'm doing it now, but you might wanna do it before you put it all together, especially if you have a punch that's smaller. This, ha this um, one inch punch works real well for this one, the, the way I'm doing it now. Okay, so there's your box completed. Now let's make the sleeve. So all we really need to do here is do some folding and creasing. And now we're gonna glue this together to make our sleeve. So this little flap that you have here is where your glue goes. So there's that. And then I'm gonna close this down on top and just seal that shut. And you don't need to do any kind of thumb here. You have it on the side, so this is fine. Now, the only part you need to decorate is right here. 
This piece is three by five and a half. That's the piece that's gonna live on top of our little sleeve, just like this. I wanna do some stamping on it. So again, using that same, that same stamp set, which is Best Dad, I wanna decide what I want it to say. So for the top panel, here's what I'm gonna do. I've made this little stripe using some of the same colors that I used on the inside of the card. I'm gonna let that live just like that. And this little guy is gonna have my sentiment across the top, so let's do some stamping. This is a two inch circle punch that I'm using, and I'm gonna stamp it to say, Happy Father's Day. So let's get my ink over here. And I'm gonna stamp the word fathers first. I think it's gonna hang off slightly off the edges, but that's okay, that won't be the end of the world. Oh, it doesn't, it fits pretty good. Fathers in the middle. And then I've got day and happy on separate blocks. I usually do better that way to just kind of do this. There's day. Let's do happy above it. Too cute. Love it. Okay. Okay. So I added a little foam to the back of my um, circle there. And now I'm going to glue this guy directly down to the um, sheet here to the page. So right in the middle. See if that'll help us line it up a little bit. And then with my foam, I might add a little bit of glue because this may get some use. So a little glue. And then I'm just going to put Happy Father's Day right there. Isn't that cute? I love it. All right, now we can glue this, almost forgot, to our card sleeve. To our box sleeve. I keep calling it a card. All right, I'm going to glue that down. And the cool thing is I can kind of flatten this and get that centered just like that. It's simple, but it's cute. Dads like anything you make. It doesn't have to be super frilly for dads, right? They, they're they pretty cool with whatever we make for them. All right, let's assemble this in our box bottom. Okay, so here's our box. And what you do is you close these guys down like so. You just press them and place them into the box. So there's one. Let's close this guy. I always try to close them opposite of the way you're supposed to. You close them where the opening is, and I always do it opposite. So place these inside like so, and then you slide this into your sleeve, and that holds everything in. Isn't that cute? And then when Dad gets it, he slides them out from either side. We put a thumbnail on either a thumb hole on either side. So he puts his thumb in, he slides them out, and that's what happens. Isn't that cool? I think I have not tried this, but I think you could put like dollar bills or something like if you were giving Dad a. a gift of money. You could like lay money right here and then place this one down and then lay money again here and then place this one down. And I feel like when he opens it, all of that would fly together. I have seen him done where confetti flies, but I'm not going to do confetti because then I'd have to clean it up, right? <laughs> so there you go. There is your pop-up box. You guys all asked for that one. And I'm so grateful for the one that was sent to me. I want to show you this too. What she did was she added all of these scriptures around the side. Isn't this cute? I love this. Please tell me in the comments what your name was. I should have written it on the box. I had a card that came with it, and I don't know which card goes to the box now. It's my fault, and I apologize for that. All right, thanks so much for watching today, guys. If you make this, and I hope that you try it, share it with us over on our customer gallery at mememadeit.com. We'd love to see what you guys are doing. Thanks so much, guys, and I hope you have a blessed Father's Day. Bye-bye.